Does my hair look okay? Mm -hmm. Does my hair look okay? Yes, it does. I actually like it like that. Thanks. It's a little more Rory Gilroy. <laughs> Hi, booktube. I'm Sarah. And I'm Rebecca. And today we are doing the world's worst book tag. This book tag was created by Peter over at Peter Likes Books. I will link his channel in the original video down below. He's fantastic. Please go check him out. He didn't tag us in this video. We're just gonna do it anyway. The world's worst book tag. Question number one. What book or series would you force your enemy to read? So to me this is like I know a lot of people don't read as avidly so my initial instinct is just to give someone a really long book. I just said War and Peace. War and Peace? Because <laughs> that's <laughs> dry. It's not originally in English so it's like a translation. Oh. It's dry. It's a book I've never read because the joke about a book being too long is that it looks like War and Peace. I first interpreted this question as like a bad book, yes, I guess, a book I that agree. you hate. I hate books for very specific reasons that maybe my enemy wouldn't hate the book for the same reason. Yeah. So I decided that any enemy of mine is not a reader. That's true, yeah. So I picked Gone with the Wind. I've never read it yet. Look at that fucking print though. That's what, like eight point? Gone with the Wind. Gone with the Wind. Gone with the... Again with the wind. Listen. <laughs> Margaret Mitchell. I think she's I'm making- I'm from New Jersey. She's making fun of my Jersey. <laughs> what the fuck, man? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Simmer your Jersey ass down. I can't. I can't. <laughs> You're in out. Connecticut now. We're ladies. <laughs> <laughs> we drink mimosas. Out of teacups. Feel it. That's how we do it in Jersey. Is it? I don't know. I haven't been there in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Question number two. What book have you tried several times to read but never finished? My answer would be Game of Thrones. I've tried to read a copy of it prior to watching the show and after watching the first season. Both times I tried several times to sink into it. I never got more than maybe 50 pages. I tried. I picked a book that I picked up during one of those reading slumps I was talking about. I picked up The Devil's Alphabet by Daryl Gregory. This is about a town that gets hit with like a disease and it kills a third of the people, and then the majority of the rest turn into monsters. And the protagonist of this book was unaffected by the disease, and he leaves town shortly after this happens. Then he comes back, I think, 15 years later, or something like that, after the mysterious suicide of a friend of his, of his childhood friend. I don't know why I haven't been able to get into this. I think because I picked it up during a reading slump, and I've tried it a couple of times since then. My husband read it, and he liked it, but I just, this cover I hate, I hate this cover. Bit. I don't like the cover. It's not actually creepy it's almost like comical but also or his, his eyes are upside down to start it, with but it just looks like he, somebody put eyebrows under his eyes and he's like what? it like took he's me just, years to realize that his eyes were upside down <laughs> like, I, that I was the first that thing i thought when i looked it at does it. look like someone just put eyebrows under his eyes and he's looking at them <laughs> question number three what book has a close friend recommended that you ended up loving so i was actually going to say Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. By Lainey Taylor, which you recommended to me and we read at the same time for a book club. I had never heard of it before. It's a little YA, but just a little weird fantasy. And I ended up really loving it. It's not the sort of thing that I would normally read, I think. It just it ended up really fun and really lovely. And I don't get recommended a lot of books, but that yeah. is one where I just ended up really liking it. I picked one that kind of you recommended, but also kind of came from the Vaginal Fantasy Book Club from that Felicia Day runs on Goodreads. Delightful book club, by the way. They read mm -hmm. mainly kind of fantasy romance, but not Genre fiction romance. Yeah. One week they were doing the first book in the Kate Daniels series, which I think is called Magic Bites. Didn't love it. Felicia Day and her friends live stream on YouTube them discussing the books. Yeah. So we watched that. And they were talking about how much they loved the series. So I decided, okay, I like Felicia Day. I trust her. So you took the plunge. I took the plunge. So and I read the second one and got through the rest of the series so fast. It's still going on. I actually haven't picked up the newest one. But they're fucking delightful. And it's not a series that I would have picked up yeah. normally. I don't know if this counts because Felicia Day is not really a close friend of so mine. So my close friend... <laughs> 
You mean Felicia Day. Like you said, not a lot of people recommend books yeah, to Yeah, it's weird. Unless you have a very particular kind of friends, sometimes you're the only one in your group of friends who's reading a lot. Question number four. What book in the last year took you the longest to read? So I went with one that I actually read a little over a year ago, Ringworld by Larry Niven. It's a fantastic book. It is high science fiction. It was very intellectual. There was some cool like science speculation in it. If you're not in the mood for that, it, it can be a lot. So I read it simultaneously while I was read, reading other books, mm. and I only read it like in little chunks at a time. For this question, I picked Shanghai Girls by Lisa C. I enjoyed this book, but it's rough. It was rough to get through. It is about two sisters who live in Shanghai in the 30s, and their father kind of sells them as wives. And it's just about very sounds sad. <laughs> right. <laughs> Apparently she wrote another book called Snowflower and the Secret Fan that's also just as difficult. So I, I bought it. I don't know what's wrong with me. But it's just about them going to America and so much. It's a lot about immigration and it's a good book but it took me like weeks to read which is for how short it is was a really yeah. big thing for me. I did like the book it's not super enjoyable, <laughs> if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, some books, like, you know that you feel like for yourself, you just need to read. Like, I'm gonna grow as a person yeah. maybe a little bit if I read this. You're gonna expand your view on things and you're gonna feel compassion. So it was important, but difficult. Question number five. What is the book you read the fastest in the last five years because it was so damn good? I read a lot of books really fast, but I also read a lot of short books that are just quick mm -hmm. day reads, I call yeah. them, that I've read in yeah. one sitting. That's kind of what I took this as for me. Yeah, I actually decided to look at a book that's kind of long and dense that I still ended up reading fast. So I picked NOS 4A2 by Joe ah. Hill. Really long fucking book. <laughs> and I blew through it and I did not expect to. It was my first Joe Hill book. I think I've read the rest of his novels by now. Oh, I haven't read The Fireman yet, but I own it. Uh, the book is about a girl who finds this bridge that kind of is a portal. I don't want to say too much because I think knowing very little about this book is better. Yeah. And this portal eventually kind of leads her to a very evil man who lures children into his car and takes them to a place called Christmas Town. I think it's called Christmas Town. <laughs> and it takes place over the span of many years. And it was just, I s got sucked in. And despite it being a dense long book, I probably read it in two days. For a book that I read very fast, I actually picked a series of books that I didn't expect to like as much, but I ended up just getting kind of thrown into the Anita Blake series, mm. the Vampire Hunter romance series. There's like a lot. 20 or Are 30 Are they still now. going on? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. How many of them have you read? I think I read 14. I have <laughs> never read that many books of any series. That is impressive. <laughs> they're, but they're like not even 200 pages long, some of these books. But the reason that I picked those for this is because every single one of these books that I read, I read in less than two weeks. I don't read books that fast. Yeah. That's like less than one a day. They were so like fun. They were like candy. I would say that I didn't feel the need to read more at some point. They felt like, it, it felt a lot like I wasn't getting something new. It's like it was going through the same rigmarole. Very fun books and so consumable. <laughs> Steve, my man, Go buddy, Steve. just simmer down. Simmer down, mate. I had a gun. Question number six, clear your mind. Mm -hmm. Clear my mind, clear my mind, clear my mind. My muscles. What are the first three books that immediately come to mind? Uh, help me, Harry Potter. Is there a book called Help Me, or were you asking me? No, I was just okay. saying Help Harry Potter, obviously. Harry Potter. I keep thinking of this one because it's right in the middle. Manual, oh, manual Detection. Thing. And now I'm thinking about the help because I said help me. <gasps> what? Oh. It was, I'm now thinking of Laurel K. Hamilton. I was also thinking about Neverwhere. We were reading Neil Gaiman recently, and I love Neverwhere. Question number seven. The last book that you will admit to skimming. I'm so sorry. You skimmed American Gods. I skimmed parts of American Gods. Why did you skim it? Okay. So, this is weird. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is a very specific trait of mine. I understand that magic tricks take a lot of skill. I'm not really interested. I think baseball also takes a lot of skill, 
I don't really want to watch baseball. That's fair. You know how like when a kid is like talking to you about something and you have to pretend to be interested because mm -hmm. you don't want to kill their spirit but you don't give a shit? Yeah. That's how I feel whenever an adult shows me magic tricks. Okay. I'm like, cool, wow, and I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't care. And there are paragraphs of Shadow, the protagonist of American mm -hmm. Gods, doing these sleight of hand coin tricks. And after the third, I was like, do I have to read these paragraphs? No. So I would like see him talking about it, like, oh, Shadow put it in this hand and then looked at this hand and then put it in his pocket. I was like, when does the plot start again? Okay. I skimmed American Gods. I'm sorry. One thing that I skimmed that I kind of regret and would like to go back and read, The Great Gatsby. Oh. Have you read The Great Gatsby? Yes, I did read that in school. I don't really remember it. Yeah. I don't remember loving it. But I also really like imagery and metaphor, mm. and it has a lot of that. That's not for me. Yeah, I know. Question number eight. What author, if they secretly dropped a brand new book tomorrow, would you immediately have to buy and read? Kat Winters. She's probably one of the only authors that I actively pay attention to her releases. Kat yeah. Winters tends to write about books that take place during the women's suffrage era. Interesting. And they kind of revolve around that a lot. They usually are in Oregon because she's from there. Steve, why? <laughs> <laughs> Just leave, leave him. Steve. Leave him. Steve, fuck you. You're out of it. You wanted to leave? Yeah. Then leave. Oh, you know so. who didn't leave? This baby girl this baby girl with her beautiful legs oh my god her legs are so sexy by the way isn't this cover like it's so, so pretty. beautiful that's why we put it in the you center could, like, this is dive her first into novel it. so for this i know i've spoken about this person previously but i would say nk jemison mm. NK... have you read all of her books by the way no just curious okay she's only written five books mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think she just came out with one last year she's been winning hugo awards like nobody's business her first book came out in 2011. she's she only been in the game like six years burst onto the scene and started like pumping out books just feed me these books <laughs> question number nine favorite book or type of book to read in bed or by the pool those are two those very are so different, different places so I'll, I'll, let's discuss both in the bed i like to read romance <laughs> if like the hubby comes in then you're then like you're, like, you're ready to go. Yeah. yeah you've already read a whole romance I'm novel revved up yeah yeah i read mostly in bed so i feel like i don't i do read that's a usually lot where bed. i read so yeah. i read anything in bed on the flip side i don't even like to be by the pool I'm not an outdoor person. There's too much sun. The sun's it's out It's gonna there. make me tired and sunburned and yeah. I'm pale. I like outside and there's bugs and <gasps> there's, you can't control the surroundings. Outside sucks. I don't like it. There's people there and people suck. We'll just like sit by a bowl of water. <laughs> <laughs> this is our pool. Let's just splash it. Let's just sit by a teapot. Ooh, filled with nothing because we drank it all. No, actually, I actually have this little button. Go <laughs> in bed, porn. By the pool. Why would we go outside? Fuck no. that. Stay in bed and read porn instead. Question number 10. What book would you give to your friend and force them to read because it's so good. I answered this one before I knew you started reading this book. And it's The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. Which I'm currently reading. She's currently reading this book. You can tell because it's full of my bookmarks. <laughs> I love this book and it's so atmospheric and there's oh, romance great. and it's so beautiful. And when I saw that question, I was like, Sarah would like The Night Circus. And then you told me you bought it and then I saw that you were reading it and I was like, this is fucking destiny. Yeah. It's meant to be. I'm loving it so far. I'm a lot of the way through it, actually. I didn't actually think of a que an answer for this because I didn't know it was Hurry a up! Recommend me a book! Do it! <laughs> I already actually know, though. If I could make you read one book, it would be for you to fucking start reading The Sandman. Oh, The Sandman. So The Sandman is a series of graphic novels or a comic book series that's now in collections. So if I had to pick one, I would pick The Sandman, which this is volume one. It's a collection of comic books and it's by Neil Gaiman. It's his quintessential work as far as I'm concerned. His quintessential comic book work. I think American Gods is probably his quintessential novel. So if I could, I would just like snap my fingers and you would have already read. You gave me like the first one. Uh, those I feel like it was there. this one. 
yeah, that's number one. And I started reading the first couple pages and I felt like I had missed a volume. That's what it felt like. No, to me. no, it, that's, it, that's what it should feel like. I don't read a lot of graphic novels, so it takes me a minute to get the format it, yeah i read a number of manga when i was in high school but which are very, very different, different. yeah <laughs> graphic novels i read a bit of saga i read a bit of giant days i read a bit of lock and key mm -hmm. i read i've read watchmen that was the worst book tag ever it really wasn't no it wasn't actually it's was pretty good yeah that's like the world's most decent book tag peter that's yeah. what you should call it from now on thanks for watching and catch us next time when we talk about something else.